Hello everyone, I'm Maisie and welcome back to Student Life. Today I'm here to bring you a video on note taking. Note taking is obviously a really key aspect of university as it's the way to get the most information out of your lectures and your seminars. Of course note taking is an extremely personal thing and it all depends on the way you learn as to what kind of note taking process will be beneficial for you. So hopefully you'll take something helpful from today's video uh, in preparation for studies when they start up in October. So I am a film and television studies student and I'm about to go into my third year of uni, which means I'm starting to prep for my dissertation this summer. So I'm actually going to be going back over a first year lecture from one of my first ever modules at university because it happens to be related to what I'm doing my dissertation on. So I'm gonna go back over that and share that with you as I make some notes on it in preparation for October. So here I have a lecture on my iPad. It is from my film and TV history module, again back in first year. So I like to keep track of the lecture number, so the week of the term. So this was week four of the second term of first year, I believe. And I like to write down the date of the lecture just so I can keep on top of that as well. And then I also add in the title underneath. So this lecture was called The Human Face of Soviet Russia Films of the Thor. The first thing that came up was this timeline here, which I've copied back out in my rewriting of these notes. I find it's much more productive and helpful to listen to what the lecturer is saying in the lectures rather than copying out the slides, because usually the slides are available to you later on Blackboard to catch up on. So here I have this timeline just from 1945 through to 1964 and I have copied this up after my lecture and then started my actual notes underneath it from about here. I like to go through and write out some quick lecture notes during the lecture of what the lecturer has been saying um, and then go back through it at a later date. I went back over this one after the lecture and went through the slides again and also this lecture happened to have a panopto a lecture recording as well so I listened to the audio of the lecture again and went back through in order to combine the slides with my actual notes. So the way I'm actually taking these notes on my iPad is with an app called GoodNotes. I find that GoodNote is a really really helpful app, it costs about £10 on the App Store, it allows you to create notebooks for every single module, it allows me to keep all of my notes and course materials in one place. So when I set up a new notebook at the start of the term I like to title it with the module name then I like to head over to Blackboard and open up the module guide and import that into my document and that allows me to just keep track of everything at the start of the notebook so any key readings are usually listed in the module guide, any assessments that need to be completed and their due dates, that just allows me to have all of that at the start of the module. So then after that I will set up the page for my lecture and then I will go through and add my notes with a colour scheme. So I use red for film titles and then I like to use blue to denote the names of books and articles and then I also like to use green to denote the critics and authors that we are discussing in the module. So again I can find quotes by that author or by that critic really really quickly and easily if I need to which really helps speed up the essay writing process if I'm looking back through my notes for something. So then after that I will add in my reading for the week if I haven't done that before the lecture. I usually try and do it between the lecture and the seminar to deepen my understanding of what's been covered in the lecture. A lot of readings for my course are listed as PDFs under our Blackboard site, so I like to go over to the site and import the PDF into GoodNotes. It's really easy to do and then that allows me to go through and use the highlighting tool to highlight the important information which I can then write up ready to take into the seminar and refer back to in the discussions. So I find that that is the best way of note taking for me. I find it's really comprehensive and this app really helps you to organise everything really well and keep everything all in one place but still separate it out by subject. Also the app allows you to export your pages of notes to a PDF and then you can save that to either OneDrive or Google Drive, whatever kind of backing up system you like to use. So it means you've always got your notes around, so you're never going to lose them, which I find is really, really helpful and reassuring. And then also it means you can find your notes anywhere and you can access them from any place. So there are some digital alternatives to using iPads for your notes. So another option is to use OneNote, which is actually free with university as the university gives you a free subscription to Microsoft Office, if you didn't know. So that's worth Word, Excel, OneNote, everything like that is comes free with the university subscription that they give you and again you can use this in pretty much a similar way to GoodNotes on the iPad and OneNote also has the added bonus of being able to organise things into notebooks so as you can see here over on the left I've created a notebook called Dissertation Prep 
as I said again this lecture is something that I need to go over for my dissertation so again I've got this notebook here and that automatically backs up to my OneDrive as well so it just keeps everything backed up and safe so that you're never going to lose any of your notes and then you can add sections to your notes as well so this notebook for example would be a module on your course and then you would have a thing for lectures and then you could add in pages for each different lecture which would automatically be dated for you as well which is great and then you could add another section for seminar notes uh, or even for labs as well if that's something that you have on your course so another way that you can take notes is just plain and simple by hand there is nothing stopping you from doing the exact same process that I've shown you if that's something you think would work for you but then using it on paper instead if you find that handwriting is one of the best ways to take notes for you to remember the content which it is for me personally then using this method and sticking to a good old pen and paper might really work for you so I can start off by writing the number of the week of term and then also the date at the top so I would add in the title like this and then also I can go ahead and draw in the timeline as well and then just go ahead and add in my notes below that and then there is nothing stopping you from using the same colour coding system that I discussed earlier on your paper notes so I could add in some notes on the fall of Berlin and then also I could write in the names of books in blue and the name of the critics and authors in green. I would say though that if you're doing this by hand, switching out the colours so often probably won't be very uh, practical in the lecture itself. You'll probably have to go over and write up your notes like this afterwards because it's quite probable that you'll run out of time if you're fiddling around with different colours of pens during the lecture because in my experience anyway, lecturers tend to go over content really, really quickly. Then another way that I would use pen and paper for my notes is to make a poster form of notes from that lecture. That's actually what I'm going to do now. As I said, this lecture will be helpful for my dissertation. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a poster form of this. So thank you for tuning into Student Life. I hope this has been really helpful for you. And if it has, and you'd like to see more of our content, you can check out our social medias and subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.